See, here you can see the interlinking. You can see ligaments coming from coracoid, okay? From the coracoid to the humerus, okay? The coracoid humeral ligament, okay? So, this is like uh, to lesser tubercle and also to the greater tubercle, okay? Coracohumeral. And then coracoid to acromion, we have the coracoacromial ligament, okay, here. And then from the coracoid to the clavicle, we have coracoclavicular ligament, okay, which is the conoid and the trapezoid parts, okay. So coracoid process is like a center, okay, you have uh, directions of ligaments, one to humerus, one to acromion, one to clavicle, okay. And then the next one is acromioclavicular joint, which is here, okay. That capsule and also it has thickenings superiorly and inferiorly. So that is also called as acromioclavicular ligaments. Okay. And then we have posteriorly suprascapular notch. So this region, okay. That is uh, again bridged by a suprascapular ligament. Okay. That is uh, posterior. And uh, here biceps tendon is there anteriorly. So between lesser and the greater tubercle, you have transverse humeral ligament. Okay. Here. That keeps the biceps tendon inside the intertubercular sulcus or the groove. Okay. So this completes the ligaments which are outside the glenohumeral. Okay. Or it's not part of the capsule. Okay. All other ligaments, these ligaments are outside the capsule, okay, not attached to the capsule, not blended with the capsule, okay. After this, we have with the capsule, there are a lot of ligaments, okay. This side is left side, okay. In the left side, you have a specific direction. I will change the color to blue, okay. This is one horizontal, okay. And then next one is, this is oblique, okay. And then this one is again horizontal but loose, okay. The inferior portion is very loose, okay, structurally. All are anterior portion, okay, in the glenohumeral ligaments they are. And uh, this upper portion, which I am presently, I will highlight, okay. This one is the superior glenohumeral ligament. And this is middle glenohumeral ligament. And this loose portion, which is there, it's not directly inferior glenohumeral ligament. It is only the anterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament. Okay, I repeat, anterior band. The inferior ligament has three bands, anterior, intermediate and posterior, okay. So, and then we have the capsule here, okay, around, all around. So, that is very obvious, okay, everywhere the capsule only is there, okay. So, that's about the anterior one. I'll take you to the cross section of the shoulder joint. There is a beautiful uh, picture. So, in the cross section, okay, you see that there are like a, what is called as musculotendinous cuff, the rotator cuff, okay. Biceps tendon originates from supraglenoid tubercle, okay, just above the glenoid, this yellow shading, what I am doing. And then you see for coracoacromial arch, okay, which was there already between coracoid and acromion. Below that, the green color one, subacromial bursa. Okay, this is subacromial bursa. The next one is from posterior, it is the supraspinatus tendon. Change the color to red or black. Okay. Yeah. So, supraspinatus tendon is just here, okay, this region, postro superior region, which is in black. And infraspinatus is marked, okay. And you can see there is no gap between supraspinatus and infraspinatus. They are all attached to each other. There is minor muscle is here, 
but you can see that uh, they are all attached by a single okay fibrous sheath okay that is the rotator cuff and then it comes to anterior here okay and this once it has come anterior remember from here i mentioned the three glenohumeral ligaments okay anteriorly what is present so among that the superior glenohumeral ligament okay. this one and then middle glenohumeral ligament then in the inferior glenohumeral ligament this is anterior band this is intermediate band and this is posterior band okay so there are around five ligaments each of them coming in different directions this is superior glenohumeral ligaments this is middle okay this is anterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament this is intermediate band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament and this is posterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament what is important in this anatomy is remember there is no other ligament posteriorly present in the joint here okay so posteriorly there is no ligamentous support it is only the rotator cuff which is present anteriorly too much of ligaments and also you have the subscapularis muscle okay subscapularis muscle i can show yellow yeah this is subscapularis muscle here okay upper portion and uh, the other important ligament which is in present inside the joint margin of the glenoid cavity which i am tracing is the glenoidal labrum okay so there is a close association between glenoidal labrum the superior labrum and the longer dam biceps okay they are almost attached to the same area so that's why yesterday we saw that uh, slap lesion superior labral tear anterior to posterior okay so that is actually an important uh, clinical presentation here and yesterday we saw the impingement syndrome which is subacromial space okay here so the impingement can happen under the coracoid impingement can happen under the acromion okay and then next we also saw the importance of the role of the rotator cuff okay how they are together they can produce what is called as centering of the humeral head okay and uh, then we saw acromion then uh, how the clavicle all this okay so there we are through with the pictures now okay coming to the direct okay so remember before we see instability okay what is important for us is stabilizers okay the stability just a moment <coughs> 